welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, today we're going to take a look at the final month of the year. Can you believe it has come up already? Um, I was thinking about this earlier today, how at many points during this year, I was thinking about this time specifically, thinking what would it what will it feel like to be in December? There were many points in this last year where I just, I wanted to fast forward everything and quickly get to December. Um, and I will cover my thoughts on that in the later part of this episode. Because that's not the way to be, right? That's not the right way to be. I know that, I know. But th this has been an excellent year for learning. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to do a little overview of 2019 in review. I've got my notes. Let's take a look at a news matchup. As many of you know, I love to look back on the month and see what happened in the news and then match that up astrologically, match that up with what's going on in the sky, that hermetic principle of as above, so below. So let's take a look. What has been happening in the news? We've had quite a bit happening in the news um, that matches up perfectly with the sky. Uh, with the sidereal Vedic view of the sky. So we have had floods in this country, in Doncaster, and um, you know parts, parts of England have been really very badly flooded. And uh, my heart goes out to anyone who's been affected by any of this. Um, this matches up with Gandanta quite exactly. I did some research today and I found out that 7th November is around the time when it was really happening and that's exactly when Jupiter was in Gandanta. Um, Venice I had a look at as well. There was some really bad flooding there. Again, my heart goes out to anyone who's had to suffer any of this. Um, the dates that I found for Venice was more like 15th and I clicked up through the software that doesn't really match um, so I'm not quite sure about the Venice uh, situation but I mean as with any of these um, phenomenons I mean often they match exactly the day but sometimes you know these things can um, can take their time to build and then break and, and happen later. Uh, we also had fires in Sydney, Australia. Now these fires were very severe, um, very intense, life-threatening um, to some people and you know I'm from Sydney, Australia. Sydney is my hometown. Many of you know I spent a chunk of this year there. Um, that, that's been a major, major piece of news for Australia, for all of Australia and Australia is now starting to consider their stance on environmental issues and that's a good thing you know um, we, I mean yeah I think there is a link uh, between what we're doing and what's happening in the world um, so it's good that that's on the radar for Australian politicians it seems to be anyway but I had a look at the dates for that and that's around that 7th November mark um, it is around that time of Jupiter being at that Gandanta point uh, so fires definitely make sense for sure because we've got um, you know Jupiter's movement into fire so that that really makes um, an awful lot of sense there so we've got two um, very strong news items that are, are very precisely matching the movement in the sky the other thing that is really quite interesting was the Prince Andrew thing. My goodness, what a crazy interview that was. Um, I'm pretty sure her name was Emily Mait Maitlis. Have I got that right? Emily Maitlis. Yeah, what a wonderful interview she did. She's absolutely incredible. Um, you know, how calm and restrained she was. I thought she, she did such an amazing job of, of uh, interviewing him. So I've got a note here to say that yeah Prince Andrew, I've got the note over it is it's happening. Uh, I predicted in September that Saturn might like to um, unearth or you know deal with what's going on here and why did I say that and I might if I don't know if I'll do this I might put a grab of um, what I said in September. I might put that in now. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
but I'll just talk you through it a little bit. Actually, what I might do is I might just link to it below or link somewhere or I'll do something like that. I'll link to it and then you can watch what I said then. But I did talk about it and what I said was, and I've got his chart up right now, um, I said that he's in the final stage of Sadhisathi. The other thing is that his Saturn is right on natal Saturn. So he's got two major astrological phenomenons happening all at the same time. Now where his Saturn is positioned in his natal chart is in the house of enemies, right? Legal battles, all that kind of thing. Um, and we've got Saturn passing through. It's extraordinary. And you know, the thing with Saturn is that if there's dishonesty, he'll want to weed that out or he'll want to expose or he'll want to make things known or he'll want to you know Saturn's got a real charge on honesty okay and those of you watching this channel if you're going through Sadhisathi for example oh you'll be fine because you very likely are a very honest person um, it's the very dishonest people who have to really worry about something like Sadhisathi uh, and of course the Saturn natal return usually I find that the second one goes well for people. I've consulted people who um, are about the 60 mark and, and they're looking to set their lives up for the next 30 years, right? And, and everyone I've consulted, you know, um, it's all been very good. But I certainly haven't ever consulted uh, anyone who hangs out with international criminals. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he's going through some uh, very tough times and um, and I knew that Saturn is going to want to sort this out. And I bet Saturn is enjoying uh, this time. You know, um, there is a justice element here. I mean, Saturn being in, in uh, Prince Andrew's sixth house. I mean, it's all going on. So this is good, right? And, and hopefully this, I mean, it could uncover quite a lot of things. Um, but I think what I said last time was that Saturn does what he can, um, you know, one thing at a time. It's, it can't all be done in one day kind of thing. Um, the unraveling and, and the revealing and the unveiling and, and the cleaning out and the clearing out. But it's happening, right? And I think that's a bit of good news there. Uh, some sad news actually today that I just found out through a spiritual teacher that I watch um, and that this is this is sad for me um, because one of my literary heroes has passed away this is Clive James um, passed away today I believe um, and what I wanted to say there is that I will do a master's episode on him I had the great honor of meeting him at a book signing where I took um, not only the book that he was launching at the time for him to be signed, I took um, with me a, a photocopy uh, of a passage that I have read and reread and read and reread. And, you know, anyway, when I met him, we had a wonderful conversation. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to hopefully find some time i don't know when i'll be able to do a master's episode on him but i um i have a list of masters that i want to do i, I have um i just haven't had the time so uh, the other thing i wanted to say is that the um, next two bad rap videos they are coming so stay tuned i'm on the case there so i'm quite delayed on my video schedule at the moment but um, i did want to make mention um of my literary hero um, having, you know, uh, transformed into another dimension. How about we say that? Um, and, I, and I want to do a master's episode on him and I might take some time to make that one. That might come um, in time or, or quite a bit later, but uh, that, that is something that I will be working on for sure. Um, Right, so let's get into 2019 in review. Now, some of you might like to watch this part. Some of you might just want to dive straight into your little mini reports. That's completely up to you. Um, please feel free to jump around this video as you like. Um, now, this 2019 in review, this is um, 
it's yes it's a bit astrological but yes it's also a bit spiritual as well and I know that some people don't like the spiritual thing they just want astrology that's absolutely fine what I will say is that um, you know time is precious and, and please don't you know, if you don't like the spiritual stuff don't watch it right <laughs> so watch what you love and, and makes you happy and you know um, some people yeah they don't they don't like the spiritual thing that's fine so this this next section is going to be a bit spiritual and astrological and if that's not your ball game or it's not what you like um, please do feel free to I mean the internet is so vast and there's such wonderful content out there and um, you know please um, feel free to watch something very different uh, you know there's no need to to spend time unnecessarily okay so let's take a look at 2019 in review now this has been a Ketu heavy year when you have um, the south node of the moon Ketu closely conjunct a slow moving planet like Saturn um, that the two moved together very very closely for a very long time it really does color the entire year um, the Saturn Ketu combination has definitely colored this year it's the standout astrological phenomenon in my opinion of the year and um, I think it has made it a tough year for people it has brought delays for a lot of people um, it's put a lot of things on hold for people um, there have been blocks that people have been coming up against there have been barriers um, those two planets have been have been doing a lot of heavy duty spiritual work in the background of digging and reshaping and fixing and a lot of things that we can't see okay that is what's been going on now when I look back on this year and having consulted many of you now um, over the year and and how it's been shaping out for you I know that a lot of people have gone through a tough year and that is actually one of the ways that I look back on the year myself um, but I was struck by a beautiful line uh, in, in an email that I'm going to read to you now now this line was written by one of you out there who watches who is a friend of mine and um, and a collaborator and you are a healer I mean I don't have enough words to say what an amazing person you are um, but your email to me I think it came on the 21st of November I've got written here it, it really struck me and it really um, made me turn around and shift my own thinking on what this past year has been and basically what you wrote was 2019 has been the richest ever spiritually and I just thought wow that is the truth of it and that and and you know you'd written it amongst other things in that email to me but it, it just really grabbed me and stood out um, as being truth and I think those people who watch this channel who are very spiritual who are very spiritually minded who are very refined and um, and you know who you are you know you guys are on it and, and you're superb beautiful people for you this would have been a very rich year spiritually um, you know and and like this this uh, friend and colleague of mine who wrote she herself is exceptionally um, a deeply spiritual soul I consider myself more um, I'm a bit more material I'm a bit more uh, every day you know but um, but yeah some of you out there I think would have had this you know this being a K through heavy year this would have been an extremely um, rich year spiritually so this line struck me in my tracks and made me realize that I have to turn around to this year and bow to the year you know um, because I think this has been an incredible year I, I, I'm seeing it now and I think it's the kind of thing that um, say for example if you've had tough spots during this year this is the kind of year that you will look back on several years from now and say that was a pretty amazing year and without this year um, certain decks and things couldn't have been cleared for my life to proceed and progress in new ways 
Okay, so that is really um, what's been going on here. I then had another friend get in touch and this was, she got in touch yesterday. Again, another, um, well, incredible friend of mine who, um, I've got her collaborator and, and, and she is also a healer and, and spiritual leader and um, is going to really, you know, carve a path for intuitive sensitive people. Um, the work that this person is doing is just mind-blowing. I, I know that. And um, and hopefully she will appear on this channel. I am going to look at doing some more videos, hopefully co collaborative videos where I interview fascinating people and we have amazing conversations and there'll be astrology and spiritual chat and all kinds of things. So, I mean, that might happen next year. I don't know when, um, but, you know, I'm always thinking of ways to expand this channel. And this particular person, actually, it's also worth mentioning that she is one of the original three subscribers to this channel. Um, so not only is she a very dear friend of mine, but she is one of, I only had three subscribers at the beginning and she was one of them. So we ended up having a really big conversation about 2019 and what this year means. And as she was talking, I just felt inspired to scribble my notes on paper, scribble what she was saying anyway on paper, um, and and to, to jot all this stuff down. And I do have her permission to share with you what she said because what was coming out was so incredible and I thought, I think my audience will really enjoy this. She said, and she's an intuitive, sensitive person. She can really tune into energies, um, feel things, and just figures things out at lightning speed. It's just extraordinary what she does. She said that this has been the year of spiritual rehab. And I thought, wow, what a great phrase. I would never have thought to put those two words together. And I just think, yeah, that sums it up. You know, um, it absolutely sums up this year in so many ways. She went on to say that there's been a heaviness this year. She went on to say that there's that we've been questioning. We've been questioning um, in order to get clarity, right? And if we have a look at where this Saturn Ketu has been, let me click back through the months. I mean, absolutely. It's in Sagittarius. Uh, and this person does have quite a lot of natural Sagittarian energy. So, um, you know, she's very in tune with what this year is all been about um, you know she's she's been living this year she said that this year has been about letting go it's been about seeing things clearly it's been about clearing out the need to fix and resolve others wow very deep um, it's been a year of looking at what are my values Okay, again, and this is a person who's not looking at the astrology and I've got my chart up here. I'm looking at the astrology and she's just telling me what she believes this year has been all about in her own words, through feelings, through observations, through this is how I've been interpreting life experience. And because she works with so many people um, in, in a coaching and counseling capacity, she's very much in tune with, with what everyone's going through. Um, she said this year has also been about no longer comparing the self to others. That that's a really big thing that we really should have by the end of this year. We, we should have quite a good uh, grip on that. It's been a year of letting go of others' opinions. Absolutely. And now this was beautiful. I jotted this down verbatim. With clarity comes courage. Wow. Now it... Now, that is this year, okay? That's fantastic because we've got the Saturn Ketu there in Sagittarius. And we've got Rahu there in Gemini, right? After the digging, the spiritual, the heavy-duty digging work that Saturn and Ketu have been doing, clearing and, you know, going deep as well. We've had some uh, Mula Nakshatra, haven't we? We've had those two hanging out there. Let me go back and have a look. When were, we, when were they there? Oh, hang on. Well, I mean... When were they there? God, this is kind of interesting to me now. Well, those two weren't particularly there, but I mean... 
Saturn was though in um, when was Saturn there we're looking at more okay that's more 2018 Saturn deep there in Mula Nakshatra apologies about this I probably should have looked at this beforehand but no seriously I mean with clarity comes courage let's go back to that point I mean look but you know what I'm saying I mean Sagittarius that is digging deep that is digging for the truth there um, but once they've done that heavy duty digging you know and then you can breathe on the other end of that axis what what are you breathing in well it's courage it, it's the Geminian stuff you know it's, it's that Gemini um, it's that it is it's that Gemini type stuff going on there Oh, I mean, it's fantastic. What other things did she say? She said it's a testing year, but when we got to this point of this has been the year of spiritual rehab, she then came up with this most amazing thing, which was to say it's like when we're born and we're born and, you know, we have these limbs, but we don't know we have limbs. But then one day we figure out we have limbs and we start to figure out how to use them. And that is another beautiful analogy that she started going into which I fully agree with and I think that um, this is the time as we get to 2020 we'll all have some new limbs we'll all have some gift or some new limbs or something some something will be revealed or unearthed or uncovered to every single one of us that we can now start using and that's got to be 2020 onwards that we start using that thing that we wake up, we've woken up to something new that we have that we can use and do something with. I really think that's here for all of us. Um, after all of that quite profound uh, pattern there with, with Saturn K through it, it's been a real big thing. So I'm just having a look at the time. It's 22 minutes. Time is just flying, but uh, I want to really thank my friend for everything that she had to say because it just occurred to me while she was talking, we are on the phone, that you know what, this is gold and um, I can share that with everyone on the channel. So I'm going to get into the little mini reports now. We, what we're going to do in these um, mini reports is we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at that beautiful eclipse and I'm very excited to do that because I think this is going to be an amazing um, solar eclipse for all of us and I think I'm going to wait for this, I'm not going to wait for it to cut out, it's just going to cut out. Apologies about that, the camera did get cut as I thought it would but that's fine, we're just going to head straight into Aries Moon. So Aries Moon, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at this month ahead and we're going to see what's happening. Now we've got a lot of planetary energy concentrated around Ketu. Again, it's a very Ketu heavy time. We're we're, um, we're going to be done with this Ketu heavy time. Okay, so it's it's not going to be like this always. We just one final hurrah, and then Saturn moves uh, into Capricorn. Fresh new energy, forward momentum. Things are really going to change come Jan Feb of next year. But what's going on for this month of December so all month you're going to be being prepared for this solar eclipse that's happening it's happening in your ninth house uh, and it's December 25th from what I can see in my software so that's quite interesting um, now what is the deal with a solar eclipse a solar eclipse really has the potential to jump you forward on your path this has got to be welcome news. I think it's welcome news for everybody really. Um, some of us need that forward jump um, or, or opportunities or something really new happening that you yourself aren't to instigate. It will be instigated for you. Um, we've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter and Mercury all in that house around that time of the solar eclipse. So what are we looking at? So when we're looking at these planets in particular, um, and when we're looking at your ninth house, which is where this is happening, from what I'm seeing, this is really to do with your life path, um, your career as well. Uh, something that will, you know, also it is to do with um, studies, the potential to meet a new guru. You might decide, you might be jumped back onto a path of academia. Maybe you thought, you know, um, 
I really, like years ago, you thought I should do an MBA, but then for whatever reason, maybe you had a kid and you couldn't, and now you're thinking, hey, I want to do that MBA now. You know, it's that kind of thing that's quite possible. Um, meeting a new guru, perhaps introducing a guru into your life. Um, maybe there's something that you've always wanted to study. Uh, there could also be travel plans for the future or something to do with travel is brought up in time or um, you know that just comes onto your agenda that okay you're going to be dealing with that now. The other thing about the potential for this time and this kind of solar eclipse is that there can be a release that happens. It can be a release of energy. It can be a release of Ketu energy as well. Uh, there can be clearing of old karmic energies around ninth house matters. Um, and a nice thing that could be happening for you internally, we've got the sun and the moon here. This is, this is really quite lovely. Perhaps your beliefs and values might be shaken, uh, shaken up a bit, but you'll be refreshed in some way. Um, I feel like you might get a chance to refresh your outlook on life. Um, and that is in terms of sun and moon, soul and mood and mind, right? Um, soul and values and how you feel about things and it can be quite internal as well. So um, there's quite nice potential Aries moon for things to be jump started, for things to be shaken up, released, cleared a little bit. Um, this is a good thing and this is a this is a last final hurrah before th there's going to be quite a shift next year uh, new energy is really being ushered in so Aries moon I wish you well I wish you all the best um, for you know the start of 2020 but I'm hoping I'm sure I'll do a video uh, before 2020 I'll be seeing you again but um, yeah really wishing you well for this December. All right, take care Aries Moon. And now we're going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at the energy for this month, what's happening for you. Uh, as with all signs, you are being prepared all month for a big solar eclipse that's happening 25th of December. So this is really big, okay? So the big solar eclipse is a big thing. Um, now this has the potential to jump you forward on your path. Wow. And I bet you would love to have some kind of forward momentum, some kind of forward jump, some kind of, I know, it's been quite a time, Taurus Moon. Um, what is this in relation to now for you? This is happening... Let me tell you, it's your eighth house. Yep, apologies, I haven't uh, got that here, but no, I do have that. So, what does this mean for you, right? We've got a solar eclipse happening in the eighth house, and you've had a lot of work on that eighth house. You've had a lot of digging up of um, old things. Um, and because it's eighth house, it can be quite deep, it can be subconscious, it can be hidden as well. So, we're looking at the structure of your family, um, the structure of your finances, other people's money. Uh, I've got a note here, perhaps you've been depending on others and th this is now set to change. Um, perhaps you've had to depend on others for these last two and a half years, for example. Okay, that's what this time might have brought about, dependence. You know, also the other thing is... Um, in-laws and, and things like that. You might have had a lot more interaction or dealing with in-laws and that kind of thing. Um, but this is good. I think this solar eclipse is re really going to be quite good for you. This could be saying goodbye. Uh, the solar eclipse could, could be getting you to say goodbye to something unhealthy or toxic that has kept you bound up for a very long time. Okay, And I do think that that's, that's about to come to an end. Um, this is welcome relief and you'll be released onto an easier path come 2020. Okay, Taurus Moon, this is, this is good, right? I know I haven't, it might not sound hugely positive, it might sound a bit, oh, but uh, no, this is very, very good. And I think you've had a lot of clearing. I think you've been going through a lot of work and, and kind of background work 
um, things are being set up and prepared for you. Okay, so if you've had to be patient, um, if you've had some tough times, if you've had some tough stuff going on with family or with having to be dependent on other people financially, um, please know that this is set to change and relief is coming. 2020 is going to be a different year for you. Uh, it is going to be a lot better. So Taurus Moon, I wish you well. I wish um, that, you know, 2020 is going to be amazing. I will speak to you before then. I'll be doing a video uh, for, for, you know, January 2020. But, um, you know, spend some time reflecting on the year. Take a look back, see how it's been uh, and what have you learnt and take stock of that because I think you're going to come out of this phase shining brighter than ever before. I think you I think you're chopping out some uh, toxic stuff and that's great right so and, and don't worry if you're not seeing evidence of it just yet you will see evidence of it later so keep hanging in there Taurus moon all right thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Gemini moon Gemini moon welcome thank you so much for joining now as for every single sign you are being prepared all month for the solar eclipse that's going to happen on the 25th of December so this solar eclipse, one of the features of a solar eclipse is that it can jump you forward on your path, right? And sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need a new opportunity or we need um, to be pulled forward into the future. This is not something you have to instigate or do. This is something that the planets are going to help you do, okay? So what, who do we have here? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury, all here. They're all hanging out here at the solar eclipse. And this is happening in your seventh house, which is all about relationships. Wow. Well, Gemini Moon, this is fascinating and it's very big. Um, there can be structural changes to your relationships, um, perhaps business partnerships, um, perhaps to your business if you're self-employed. Uh, this could even be to your marriage as well. So these um, structural changes, perhaps there's a shift, perhaps there's a jump. Um, this can be positive. Uh, it can be clarifying in nature. Okay, so there's nothing, you know, if you are going through a rough stuff with this, don't feel like um, this solar eclipse is not going to be good. No, it, it might be clarifying, okay? Um, you know, perhaps you are soon to let go of old patterns or dynamics that aren't working anymore in your partnerships, in your marriage, uh, in your business, okay? Um, Saturn will have been testing weak links. Yeah, definitely over the past two and a half years. Whoa, he's been going through that area of your life, hasn't he? Um, it could be high time to let something go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that's across the board for everybody, actually. I think we all have to look back on this past year and work out what am I letting go? What am I not doing anymore? You know, um, what am I not wanting to engage in anymore? You know, what isn't me anymore? Maybe it's something like revenge, you know, or maybe it's something like um, blaming people, you know, pick some good stuff like that and, and decide and say, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I used to do it, but I'm not doing it now. Um, and when the universe tests you, welcome the test. Not easy to do, but there we go. This is, this is what we come for. Uh, on a positive note, if you have been off track in some way, yeah, absolutely, this solar eclipse may bring new opportunities to be, bring you back on track in a powerful way. Okay, so if you do feel like you've been off the path, um, you know, this, this solar eclipse could be really something that you need just to get you back on track. So Gemini Moon, I wish you well for the month ahead. I will be seeing you again uh, before the new year, before 2020, because I will do my um, January 2020 video very soon. So thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing, doing all that wonderful stuff. And we're now gonna welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to take a look at this huge astrological event that is coming up, which is the solar eclipse on the 25th of December. So you're being prepared for this all month. Um, that's really the energy. There's a lot of planetary energy that is uh, hanging out down there with Ketu. All the planets are hanging out. They're all milling together and they're all getting ready for this big solar eclipse, which is pretty epic because we've got a lot of planets here. So 
what is the power and potential of a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse has the potential to jump you forward on your path. Okay, it can bring you new opportunities. Um, it can be an amazing thing, right? And it, this is not something you have to chase or pursue or do. This is something that will happen for you. Okay, um, so who have we got in the mix when the solar eclipse is on? We've got Saturn, we've got Ketu, we've got the Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. That's a lot. That's a full house right there. Um, and this is all happening in your sixth house, which is all about health, career, service to the world, competition, legal battles, right? Um, you know, bringing order to chaos. Anywhere in your life where you've got some chaos and you're wanting to bring order to that, that's the kind of area of life that we're dealing with. Um, you might be feeling tested. You might be trying to escape into something spiritual if need be, if things get a bit heavy here. They might. Things might get a bit heavy here, right? Um, but truly, I mean, this eclipse has the potential to bring you powerfully back on track if you feel that you've been off track in some way, okay? Um, and I've got a note here for you. I haven't really put this note in for anyone else. I've got a note here. The trick to do this will be to tune in to Mars, which is in Scorpio, after the eclipse. And what you want to be doing is throughout this December and throughout that eclipse, and if you're going through some heavy stuff because there's a lot of sixth house activity going on there, um, my tip for you is to calm, calm down the mind and watch your creativity accelerate. Calm down, but speed up you can see those things happen at the same time. And there's an amazing, um, I'll tell you what to search for this. It's a Bob Proctor meditation. So if you type in Bob Proctor abundance meditation, that's where you get this concept. So if you're reaching for something that you need to help you through this time, go for that um, meditation, it's absolutely fantastic. And you will be able to start training yourself to calm down, but speed up. Okay, and be more productive. It's quite incredible. So Cancer Moon, that is my tip for you. I haven't been giving that to everyone. Uh, so that's special little news for you. Um, I hope you're doing well. And look, I, I will be in touch again uh, kind of January 2020. So before the year ends, I will speak to you again. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing. And we are now going to meet Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with every sign, all month you are being prepared for a big astrological event and that is the solar eclipse that is happening on the 25th of December. So what is the deal with a solar eclipse? Well, a solar eclipse, one of the things about it is that it has the potential to jump you forward on your path. Okay, um, it has the potential to bring in a new opportunity. This is not something that you have to create or initiate. This is something that can just come in for you. So who are the planets um, that are hanging out here when that eclipse is on? You've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. They're all there uh, in that place. And this is happening in your fifth house, which is all about creativity, romance, children. Uh, the place inside where we feel infinite. Okay, you think about the sun. The sun is infinity. The sun just beams and it's bright and it goes and goes and goes. The light just keeps going. Um, so where inside do we feel infinite? And do you know where we feel infinite? Our imagination, right? Um, our imaginations are very powerful and that's where we are totally free and we are totally infinite. That's one of the places where we can be that way. So with this solar eclipse, um, I've got a note here that these things are going to be restructured for you. Uh, you don't have to do anything. So it's structural and how you feel about these things will be impacted. So how you feel about your creativity could be romance, it could be children. It is. And you think about it, romance is something you do with someone. Children, that's a someone thing. You know, it's that, it's those interactions with the people that we love. I mean, that could be being restructured. Could even be your imagination that's being restructured or how you feel about these things. We've got the sun and moon here. So um, there is some structural shifting happening in the background for you. And this is good. I've got a note here that it can be positive and it can be clarifying. So it's either going to be one or the other or both even. Um, if there's something you need to let go in relation to romance or love, 
be prepared to do that. <laughs> now is a good time to be doing that. Um, I've got a note here, do tap into your imagination. Explore the infinity of it. Explore the infinity of your imagination. What does that mean to you, right? Um, imagine or fantasize beyond the limitations of your life. See what you can see. And, you know, this is a good time for this exercise with all that planetary energy there. You know, see what comes into your imagination. Start to tap that. Start to work with that. Um, you'll be amazed. Our imaginations are very, very powerful and we can use them any time. You, know, you might be waiting for a bus, you might be waiting for a train, you might be stuck at traffic lights. Well, maybe don't do it while you're driving, but, <laughs> but you know, find those moments where maybe you're waiting at the doctor's surgery. I don't know, but you'll have time in your life where you can, you can give that imagination of yours a good bit of a run. Um, do that because you've got a lot of planetary energy there at that time. So Leo Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for being wonderful. And uh, I will definitely see you before the new year. So take care and I'll see you next time. All right, now we are going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, all month you are being prepared for this huge event, which is the solar eclipse on 25th December. Now, what is the deal with a solar eclipse? Now, a solar eclipse can jump you forward on your path it can bring in new opportunities it can create something new for you i'm just looking at the time we've got time good um it creates something new for you this is something that you don't particularly have to instigate or do yourself this is something that will be done for you okay this this, this has that feel to it uh if I have a look at the planets that are hanging out there in your fourth house we've got saturn ketu sun moon jupiter mercury i mean we've got a lot we've got a full house here happening in your fourth house which is your domestic scene comforts mother's health um it's that it's that sense of home right what what is that for you got a note here hopefully you're going to be prepared and jumped forward or released into greater levels of comfort moving forward okay greater levels of peace of mind greater levels of you can be anywhere in the world and you feel at home okay um, I really do think that that's coming for you there could be some challenges here too structural challenges um, also some challenges in terms of how you feel in relation to home property matters potentially mother's health um, comfort concept of home but it's I, I really you know okay there could be challenges but it feels to me like um, there's a lot of good potential here. Uh, renewal is coming in this area of your life. Um, and 2020 is going to bring a very refreshing uh, new path for you. Okay, Saturn's going to be moving into the fifth house. Things are going to be different for the next two and a half years. So, um, But I will be looking at that more closely in next time's report, Virgo Moon. But um, this is nice. This is a nice... Uh, a nice thing that you got going on overall here. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm liking the look of this for you. So Virgo Moon, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing as well. Um, and I will see you before the year ends. I'm going to be doing another report for January 2020. So I'll, I'll wish you a happy new year then. But um, it's coming up, <laughs> and. Um, and I want to thank you for, for, for tuning in. All right, now we are going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with every single sign, you are being prepared all month for a big astrological event, which is the solar eclipse that's happening on the 25th of December. So what's the deal with the solar eclipse? The solar eclipse has the potential to jump you forward on your path, quite possibly. Very often it brings new opportunities. These are things that you don't particularly have to pursue. They will come to you, okay? These things will come in. Um, so who do we have here in your third house where this is happening? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, and Mercury all here. That's quite a lot of planetary energy. Um, it's happening in your third house of courage. And courage is the one that I want to focus on. I mean, we've also got in the third 
house we've got media we've got peers we've got hobbies we've got things for you to do for fun we've got using your hands we've got a lot of things um, you know lightheartedness humor there's a lot happening in the third house but I'm gonna go for courage um, courage is epic and it's much much needed in life to do anything um, and I really want to focus on courage what would it mean to you to have your sense of courage totally rewired and restructured what would that mean to you right imagine that for a little while what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail these are big questions spend some time thinking about them okay um, you might be getting a major upgrade in this area of life so once you get that upgrade imagine having that new courage what are you going to do with it next year you're going to have an opportunity to do something big to do something new okay so allow the planets to clear any lack of confidence that you might have within yourself um, it's really really time to let all of that go okay let that go because you've got new horizons and they are coming they're coming up really really quickly I'm just looking at the time 23 minutes <gasps> should I start Scorpio moon do you know I think I'm gonna wait I think I'm gonna wait we are now gonna welcome Scorpio moon Scorpio moon welcome thank you so much for joining now all month you're being prepared for the solar eclipse of December the 25th this is a big astrological event this year um, and what's the deal with a solar eclipse? What are we really looking at? Well, a solar eclipse has the potential to jump you forward on your path. So if you feel like you've been a little bit off track, if you feel like you're a bit behind, um, have a look at this time because it really can jump you forward or take you back on track or give you some kind of opportunity that, say for example, well, you don't have to orchestrate it. You don't have to make it happen. It's going to come in kind of thing. Um, the planets are taking care of it. Okay, so who have we got in the mix in the house where this solar eclipse is happening for you? Now, for you, it's happening in your second house. And who have we got there? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. So that's quite a full house, as you can see. Um, and I've got the thing that I was looking at for you with the second house. You know it's a lot of things the second house represents quite a lot of things but I'm looking at that which sustains you okay so that's the meaning that I'm focusing on this time so we've also got family there I mean what are the things that sustain you your family um, your big long-term wealth um, you know it's 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 crops it's farming it's savings it's um, art and food and all these kind of things but you know I, I often think of collective things or things that you collect as well or there's lots of things I think about with the second house um, but I'm going to focus on that which sustains you okay uh, as an overall overarching concept here so I've got a note um, imagine if the entire concept of being sustained or how you sustain yourself gets a major upgrade imagine that imagine the, the that entire realm of what sustenance is and how you are sustained that entire thing gets an upgrade okay that is what's coming for you Scorpio moon um, in fact actually I mean God we are going to celebrate you big time because you are the biggest winners of all the mini reports that I've gone through I remember thinking that as I was um, having a look at your chart today and I was putting all the notes together for this you guys are the biggest winners because you're getting that jump up with the entire concept of being sustained in relation to this solar eclipse right but not only are you getting that that's like a tiny little thing because Saturn's then going to come in and he's going to bring you a whole new level of life and that's going to start Jan Feb 2020 right and I'm pretty sure I've got yeah notes about that I do I've got a note here so you're getting a major upgrade in terms of how you sustain yourself so that's good but then Saturn's going to do this like it's just you're getting who like yeah good very good um, you're getting a lot here 
So perhaps you are going to be jumped up a path. Perhaps you're going to be jumped up a level. Perhaps you're going to be jumped forward in terms of how you sustain yourself. That's really big. But then you're being poised and set for a major jump upwards, like for the for the next level of your life potentially. Um, Saturn will take you to the next level of your life when he shifts into your third house from the moon. That's 2020. And we're looking at Jan, Feb 2020. So I've got a note here. I am so excited for you. I put capital letters, so excited for you. This has been a long time coming. It has been Scorpio Moon. Um, and I know I've been writing to quite a few of you on the channel over the last, well, couple of years even. Um, and you're, you're troopers. You are strong. You are amazing, amazing, wonderful people. And um, oh, I love this. I mean, you're... you're going to be rewarded it's, it's things are going to change okay um, sometimes when I've worked with people and I say that things are going to change and then they don't change it can be like well why is that and that is the case if you aren't doing your spiritual work I know it I've seen it um, I know that whole thing but if you are doing your spiritual work if you're doing the Saturnian things of self-honesty and self-love, if you're doing those two, um, you are just you, you've got the potential to fly. The planets can really lift you. Uh, so get ready, Scorpio Moon. Get ready for good, and keep the affirmation in your mind. Keep saying, Universe, bring me the good stuff. I'm ready. I'm ready for the good stuff now because it can come in for you. Okay. So Scorpio, I mean, I'm very happy and excited for you. And I hope you start to embody that happiness, start to feel it, start to um, just wear it and enjoy it and let it all come in because you really deserve uh, all the good and all the love in the world. So I wish you well, Scorpio. And we're going to talk again next month. So I won't wish you a happy new year just yet. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now you, as with everybody, are being prepared all month for the solar eclipse of the 25th of December. So what is this solar eclipse about? Well, the solar eclipse will jump you forward on your path potentially. If you feel that you've been a bit off track, if you feel a bit behind, this solar eclipse has the potential to bring you back or to take you somewhere even a bit better, um, to take you somewhere a bit new, to, to jump you forward potentially, which is very, very exciting. Now, where is this happening for you? This is happening in your first house of self. Oh my goodness. Okay, big, right? So who have we got here? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. We've got them all here. Um, that's a lot of planetary energy. Uh, and they're all in your first house of self. So I've got a note here that this eclipse is designed to prepare your entire sense of self and jump you forward in terms of how you feel about yourself. Okay, we've got the sun and the moon here. We've got moon here. Mood, feelings, right? We've got sun, your values. Um, so how do you feel about yourself? That's going to there's going to be a spotlight there. Um, how do you structure yourself? Because we've got Saturn here as well. Um, now, what does that mean? I was really thinking about that today. Look at all the structures in your life. Look at everything. Look at your friendship circles. Look at your family. Look at your partnerships. Look at your business. Look at how you eat, how you earn, everything. Look at every single structure in your life. Um, what could do with a boost? What could do with refreshing? What could do with you letting go? Where do you need to let go in any one of these structures? Um, and when you let go of, of something that's hard, it, it frees things up. That energy can come in and work and things can s cycle in and cycle out. It, it, there can be better flow for you. Um, what needs more of your energy and what doesn't need so much of your energy? Okay, that's another thing for you to be looking at. Look at how and where you are investing your energy in your life. Do a real stock take of that. Okay, um, so this is quite big. Um, the other signs aren't having to do with it. This is happening for you because it's in your first house. This is quite big. Um, a bit of effort from you in any one of these things that I've just mentioned is going to go a long way, right? And it doesn't have to take long. This is just for contemplation. This is just for reflection. This is just to think about. And you could be thinking about that while I'm talking now. Uh, another note I have for you, which I mentioned in someone else's, I think it was Cancer Moon, 
this is another one that's come through that for you that I need to mention here and that is to calm the mind but to accelerate and achieve more okay so you're going to try and do both um, tap into your Mars after the eclipse your Mars I think is going to be in your 12th house if I've got that right uh, it could be a bit restless there but I'm going to say be creative with your sense of spirituality study more go deeper into who you are this is a really great time for that now where did I get this calm the mind accelerate and achieve more and do more I got that from a meditation by Bob Proctor um, so this I haven't said this in everybody's uh, thingy it's Cancer Moon I told them this little tip as well so you're one of the lucky ones I'm telling as well um, and that is if you type in if you want to listen to this meditation it's absolutely brilliant I found it myself recently and um, all you have to do is type into the search bar of YouTube Bob Proctor Abundance Meditation it's absolutely superb I think it's about 21 minutes long and um, he talks about this concept of calming the mind and you accelerate and you achieve more it's absolutely brilliant so um, the sound is not great the sound quality is not great on that meditation but uh, it's worth listening to and uh, I've really been enjoying that so Sagittarius Moon I'm going to love you and leave you. It's time for me to move on to Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, you're being prepared all month, as we all are, for the solar eclipse uh, on the 25th of December. So now, where is this solar eclipse happening for you? It's happening in your 12th house of subconscious. <gasps> My goodness, Capricorn Moon, this is very big. Um, solar eclipse what's the deal with a solar eclipse the solar eclipse has the potential to jump you forward on your path okay so if you've been off track a little bit if you don't feel aligned if you need to get back on your path if you need to go forward um, this solar eclipse has the potential to do that sometimes it can bring new opportunities and these are new opportunities that you don't particularly seek out it gets arranged for you okay so um it's happening in your 12th house of subconscious now who do we have here we've got Saturn Ketu Sun Moon Jupiter and Mercury that's a lot of planetary energy all housed in that one area it's quite incredible um, so what I'm going to interpret this for you is that your subconscious mind is being restructured right so this is no small thing again it's not something you particularly have to do anything about you might not feel that there's anything going on um, it, there could be a hidden quality to this it could be energy that's you know shifting and shaping behind the scenes uh, so there is stuff happening behind the scenes for you okay and this can require patience okay because you might be thinking I'm trying all this stuff it's not working nothing's happening whoa slow down be patient okay it's happening in the background sometimes the universe and the planets and everything is is structuring everything back there for us okay and we'll be told what to do but we have to wait all right so that might be the case for you um, I've got a note here yeah the beauty is that you don't have to do anything but it's all being taken care of um, how things are structured how you feel about yourself how how your subconscious is structured okay and how you feel about yourself is being cleared and clarified um, now you can help the process by becoming conscious of what no longer serves you and what you're willing to let go of okay and in terms of letting it go and have I truly let it go well you'll be tested so don't worry about that you, 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 you know you'll attract a test if you're genuinely trying to let something go like I want to let go of revenge or I want to let go of blaming someone or whatever it is the universe will test you right it'll go okay well can you do it you know, have you really done it so don't worry you'll be tested but what I'm going to say here is that it's your willingness that counts okay that, that you really want to do it if you really want to do it you'll do it okay um, it, it'll happen uh, so don't don't worry too much about these things it's the willingness it's the intention you've got to be turned in the right direction you've got to you know go from here to being here okay uh, I was this kind of person but now I want to be this kind of person what do you want to be who do you want to be right this is this is really big stuff so get your intentions right because that's the part that you can when it comes to subconscious you, you don't have much access or much ability but you you have ability over your intentions so really get a hold on that and, and deal with that 
Um, so yeah, I've got a note here, your intentions are critical at this time. Intend all the best things and ask the universe to bring me the good stuff, okay? Because things are being cleared, um, do that, you know. Uh, th this is the time for that Capricorn moon. So Capricorn moon, <coughs> I wish you well. Oh, I tend to be um, a bit throaty after I've uh, gone through all these. Well, I have two more to do. Uh, it's been a joy, Capricorn Moon. Thank you as well for subscribing. I know, and I've got a note here. I know that you're in Sadi Sati. Hang in there. Keep going. This is this is hopefully going to be um, something that is that is clarifying for you. Okay, yeah, and there, there could be challenges, but but keep hanging in there. Um, so Capricorn Moon, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. So Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now as with every sign, you are being prepared all month for the solar eclipse of the 25th of December. So solar eclipse, what's the deal with that? Well, solar eclipse really has the potential to jump you forward on your life path. Um, if you feel that you've been off track, if you feel that you are slightly not aligned or something's not quite right, this has the ability to just jump you back to where you should be or even jump you a bit forward um, if, you, if you feel like you have been behind and you need to get back on track. Uh, so where is this happening for you? This is happening in your 11th house of networking, professional network circles. Who do we have here? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. We've got a full house here. A um, lot of planetary energy is all uh, condensed here. It's all here. So I'm going to say that there's quite a lot of restructuring happening here for you. And this is to do with, yes, I've said networking and professional network circles, but really this is to do with how opportunities come in for you. How, how opportunities come in for you, that entire thing is getting an overhaul. Okay, um, energetically, this is quite huge. So imagine that the way opportunities come to you is being rewired or restructured. Um, the other thing is how, how you feel about how the universe gives to you, um, how things come in. You know, this is, this is also being looked at. And this is fantastic. And I've got a note here that if you can be dusting off all your talents, right, all your gifts and talents, because this is also the house of um, hopes, dreams and wishes. I think that's one way that some people phrase it. So if you can be dusting off your gifts, you know, the, the, the many jewels and gifts that you have within, maybe it's your ability to write, maybe it's your... Um, how you speak to people, maybe it's how you smile at people, you know. Um, you have many gifts, right, that you underestimate, take for granted, don't even know about, all right. So look at all these gifts, dust them off and, and you need to be getting them ready. Um, you need to be getting these things ready to use in a bigger way. And uh, I'm excited for you Aquarius Moon. So I will see you again before the new year and I will be able to wish you a happy new year. So I'll see you in the next video, which will be for January 2020. I'll probably release that in December sometime. Um, hopefully I do. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. We are going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much joining i'm just gonna have a look at the time 17 minutes this is good oh it's not gonna cut this is great it always cuts with you doesn't it right what's going on so you are being prepared all month as is every sign you're being prepared for a big astrological event and that is the solar eclipse of the 25th of december now this solar eclipse has the potential to jump you forward on your path okay this is really something quite amazing um Solar Eclipse also can have the ability to bring you a new opportunity. This can be an opportunity you don't have to particularly work too hard to get. It's just going to come in for you. Um, that is definitely one of the potentials of this kind of thing. So now, where do we have this happening? We have this happening in your 10th house of career. Wow, that's pretty big. Uh, and who do we have here? We've got Saturn, Ketu, Sun, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury. That's a lot of planetary energy. That's a very, very full house. So I've got a note here saying that this area of your life has been getting the Saturnian treatment. Has over the past 2.5 years, my goodness. Um, 
your career sector area has been cleared okay uh, and next year you are very 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 lucky here's the good news Saturn is going to take you up a level in life this is coming for you now and you've been waiting patiently Pisces moon I know that some of you have been working hard for many years um, basically what you've done is where Saturn has been for you it's been a long stretch since he was last in a terrific place for you when was that terrific place he was he was in that sixth house area you know now you're coming up to the 11th that is one of the longest stretches right so you have been through a long stretch um, and I'm here to tell you it's going to get very very good okay you and Scorpio Moon I've had the best things to say for the two of you I should have also been raving about someone else who's got their Saturn going through the six I didn't rave about that so much but um, you know but you guys are really it's because you guys it's, and um, Scorpio Moon Scorpio Moon I raved about and you guys as well I mean this is just for them it's particularly something special because they're coming out of Sadi Sati, right? You are going to be going into the 2.5 years before your Sadi Sati, okay? So that you are going to have Sadi Sati to deal with but you're going to have a magnificent two and a half years ahead starting Jan Feb 2020 okay so let's have a look here Saturn is going to take you up a level of life one of the very lucky signs so career is being cleared and cleaned for you you don't have to do anything did you just hear that I heard that that didn't sound very good anyway um, I have interesting people next door don't we all uh, okay let's have a look here so career is being cleared and cleaned for you you don't have to do anything and you are likely to be jumped forward on your path so not just by the solar eclipse Saturn's going to take you up a level as well so you know solar eclipse is going to do a little something for you and then boom Saturn's going to do a little something a lot of something for you I think um, depending on you know if you work with it my goodness this can be amazing so if you felt off track or behind get ready to jump to light speed is what I'm saying this is very very exciting for you um, things are going to be a lot better for you and I've got a note here that this is what you've been waiting for Saturn's moving to Capricorn 2020 Jan Feb of next year he's in his own house he's in his element he's in your 11th house wow fantastic Pisces moon so uh, you know you've got a lot to look forward to rest now if you can okay heavy k through energy if things are challenging rest 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 the time will come uh, for action that's going to come a bit later so pisces moon thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you next time